few days ago I published a video about the flagpole antenna. I got a lot of interest. It's quite an interesting antenna. But you know, when you publish a video, very often you get some comments. And some of the comments refer to other antennas that are not a million miles away from the antenna that you just described. And one comment, or a couple of comments actually, was, is this similar to the zip cord antenna? The zip cord antenna, you say? What the hell is a zip cord antenna? Well, let me tell you. Now, first of all, zip cord, it's basically twin flex that can be speaker cable or even mains cable. And it's an American term, zip cord. And in fact, the zip cord antenna emanated originally from an American design. Well, the big thing, the most interesting thing about zip cord antenna is it's very simple. It's very easy to make. It's very cheap. All you need is a bit of zip cord. Well, actually, you do need something a bit more than just zip cord. You do need an antenna tuner. That adds to the cost. But if you ignore the fact that you need an antenna tuner, then the zip cord should be the answer to a lot of people. It's a very simple antenna. It's low cost. And apparently, it's very popular for portable work. Well, I can understand that. Oh, it's multi-band as well. So we've got a multi-band antenna that's made out of, pe out of a piece of zip cord and apparently works. Well, let me tell you a bit more about this zip cord antenna and how it should work. By the way, it's been used by a number of G stations, actually, so it can't be that bad. It's actually appeared in an RSGB publication, so it must work, doesn't it? Well, anyway enough of that. Let's talk about the zip cord antenna. And a quick call out to Waters and Stanton. Waters and Stanton, a ham radio dealer, been going for 50 years now. Mention my name, you may get a great deal. And don't forget, we've got a great showroom at Milton Keynes. You're more than welcome to visit us there, Monday to Friday. Take a look around, you might find some interesting gear. And if you can't make it, then give us a phone call or check our website. We'd be more than happy to help you. We're here to help you. We've been going for a long time. This is zip cord. We know it as twin flex. The sort of thing that you get at your local ironmongers. Would you believe that your local ironmongers, B&Q and all the other places around the country, sell antennas in the form of twin flex. And what you do is you part this twin flex like that, pull it apart, and that is your dipole. Now, that's a very simple dipole, of course, but you pull it apart, and that could be a 20 meter dipole, for example. So the top section would be 10 meters long, a half wave dipole, or around about 33 feet if you're my age. And you then tie a little knot in it like that. This, of course, is a very small scale. Though. You tie a a knot in there to stop the antenna or the wire parting anymore. And now you've got twin feeder. This flex is twin feeder. Now there is a bit of a problem. The problem is that this flex is a bit lossy. It probably works on 40 and 20 meters, but anything higher and it's a bit lossy. But in the days when it was first conceived, in the 1930s, they weren't too worried about that. They were more concerned about having something that radiated. In fact, they had no means of measuring the efficiency of an antenna, really. And because in those days it was quite conventional to have twin feed, because coax cable didn't really exist then. So twin feed was the order of the day. And there we have a very simple dipole with twin feeder that works on a single band or three or two bands if you have a 40 meter version of course it works on 40 and 15 meters but there's a better way now than using just twin flex we use some form of balanced line and i would suggest that the obvious line to use is 450 ohm ladder line but let's now take this a bit further than just the simple zip cord 
antenna. Now, a good few years later on, K4ESE came along and he saw this dipole and he had an idea. He got a pair of wire cutters and he cut off one side of the dipole. Now he was left with a quarter wave. A quarter wave which then became a vertical. He could still feed this antenna with balanced line. So let me explain how it progressed from there. The antenna was described in RADCOM July 2008 by Peter Dodd's uh, G3LDO and uh, he summarised the design and it's got various names, it's been called the Broadband Vertical, the Magic Multiband Vertical, the No Counterpoise Vertical, several names and I suppose you could also call it the End Fed Vertical. But whatever name you give it, it's a vertical antenna, it is broadbanded. Whether it has or hasn't got a counterpoise is questionable. But the underlying point I think that we're all interested in is, is it seems to work. And that, for many of you watching this video, I think is the prime interest. So let's have a look at how this antenna is put together. It's quite simple really, it's something you can make at home and uh, it's worthwhile uh, taking a look, I think, anyway. The original antenna was like this. We've got the vertical section, and then we've got the balanced line section there. That covers 40 metres through to 10 metres. The height is 50 feet. Hmm, 50 feet. That could be a bit of a problem for some of us, couldn't it? Ah, but wait a minute, there's some good news. Those of us with smaller gardens can make a half-size version. So we've got the balance line there, we've got the vertical section there, the total height is just 25 feet, which is much more reasonable. And that will cover 20 metres through to 10 metres. Not bad, we can fit that into many gardens. So let's see how we feed the antenna. We'll go close in and look at just the feed points at the bottom of the balance line. So we've got the balance line there. The rest of the antenna is up there. Then we have coax. We have a coax feed there. One side goes to the uh, that side, the right hand side of the balance line, and the inner conductor goes to the other side like that. And that's your coax cable there. We then immediately have a line isolator there. That could also be a one to one or four to one but the line isolator um, works just as well. So we have a line isolator there um, wound on a ferrite core, which I'll just show you here. For the line isolator I use a ferrite core. Normally I use a 240-43 mix ferrite core and about seven or eight turns of coax around the core. I've never found the number of turns is very critical actually but uh, that seems fine for the HF bands, uh, say from 40 metres through to uh, 10 metres. And you can just see here what uh, I use. Very simple, but it's very effective. And then beyond that goes the coax cable to the radio room, but it goes into an antenna matching unit. So we must have an antenna matching unit at the shack end. So let's take an overall look at the antenna. Here we have our antenna with the balance feed. The overall length is 25 feet. Sorry it's in Imperial but there we are. We then have our coax feed there. Coax cable there. Shielding goes to one side, the inner conductor goes to the other side. 
Then we have our line isolator there. And then we have any length of coax cable beyond that back to the antenna matching unit. That system is broadband and will cover 20 metres through to 10 metres. Now you might ask about the velocity factor. That doesn't seem to come into question at all and all I can say that in practice this dimension works. You have um, 12 and a half feet there and 12 and a half feet there which is half of 25 so that effectively is fed at the center so that's that's the uh, zip cord antenna now if you really feel adventurous you can make it out of uh, twin flex and see how you get on it might be fun actually uh, bear in mind that there is going to be a bit of a loss on that twin flex so uh, <laughs> it's up to you i personally would use 450 ohm ladder line and that would seem to be the ideal uh, way of uh, making it and as regards support, well, I would uh, suggest that uh, if you can't find a support, you consider something like the spider pole, the telescopic fiberglass pole. That would be ideal for it. Some people have got a tree in their garden, they hang it from a tree. It's not overly high. We're talking about, was it 25 feet high? Well, it's got to be a bit above that because you don't want it touching the ground. But um, spider pole, we sell spider poles and I'll put a link below this video. Um, you might want to invest in one of those. Bear in mind, when you buy a fiberglass pole, there's basically two types. Um, the higher quality, which are the spider poles, uh, are more expensive, but they will last ages. Uh, the cheaper ones are fine. They do the job, but uh, they'll start to crack and they deteriorate in the sunlight. So, you know, you, you pay your money and you take your choice. Now, this antenna is ideal for portable work, but of course it can be used as a base station antenna as well. You do need an antenna matching unit. Now, if you've got an internal antenna matching unit in your transceiver, you can try that. You may find on the one or two bands it works out, but um, uh, very often you really need something with a wider uh, matching capability. I use the ICOM IC7300 which I've got here and I've got that permanently on the emergency mode because that enables the antenna to match uh, the antenna matcher or tuner to match a wide range of impedances. The downside is you lose half your power, you've only got 50 watts but um, you know you uh, that, that's 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 the choice but if you want an external antenna matching unit so you can run full power from your transceiver then look at the LDG range of antenna tuners. They're very good. Uh, they're not overly expensive. The automatic ones are very good, of course. It uh, makes things very fast indeed. So you might want to consider one of those. But there we are. This is one of these interesting antennas that it, it, it's, it's difficult to actually analyze. Is it, in fact, an NVZEP? Well, you know, you can, you can you look at it various different ways. But one way or another, it's a way of getting on the air very simply and covering a number of the amateur bands. And in the actual RSGB publication, they went on to discuss how you could have two of these phased, but that's beyond this video at the moment. Really, I wanted to bring to your attention the simple antenna which is known as a, a zip cord antenna not a zip wire antenna but a zip cord antenna emanates from the usa and i think it started life back in the 1930s and as far as i can make out is still going strong today which is not a bad recommendation in the meantime thanks for your support on this channel it's much appreciated you take care enjoy your home radio and as usual i'll see you in the next video bye for now